Excuse me, could you tell me what time it is? Oh, that's right. It's time for Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry. You'd think I knew that already. Hi there, everyone. Welcome to this here electronic engineering podcast brought to you by eejournal.com and hosted by me, Amelia Dalton. Guess where we're headed this week, my friends? To the land of optics. Oh, yes. And we have a double header of optical goodness to throw your way. And not just any old optics. Oh, no. We're talking about fiber optic communication in the most rugged of environments. From FPGAs to connectors to all the eyes in between, we're talking about data going the distance and what to do when copper just won't cut it. First up, please welcome Mark Benton from TE Connectivity. Mark and I are chatting all about the different levels where optics can exist in the world of electronic packaging and how the most recent advancements in fiber optic technology have ushered in a whole new era of box-to-box and PC-to-PC communication. All right, let's get rolling. My guest today is Mark Benton from TE Connectivity. Thank you so much for joining me, Mark. Hi, nice to be here. Okay, so let's talk about fiber optics. Now, most of us know about cable or internet using fiber optics, but let's talk about it in harsh environments in particular. Now, what are the benefits you're seeing there? I think, first of all, fiber optics in a harsh environment is not necessarily a new technology. It's been around for a while, and so there's really quite a bit of solid field experience that demonstrates it's rugged enough. But I think the real benefits are as the amount of information and data and sensor information that's transmitted in military, avionic, just about any of those harsh environment applications continues to increase the bandwidth of fiber and its relatively lighter weight And its ability to be ruggedized really gives you the bandwidth that you need to accomplish the communication task in the first place. You have distances now where you just physically can't push the signal electrically over the distances you need to do it. There are many levels where optics can exist in the world of electronic packaging, right? That's correct. It starts, you know, with the basic connection to the lasers or the detectors themselves, or it really comes to shine is when you get onto things like a VPX card, a 3U card that is packed with processing power, and you look at the transceiver evolution from the small, discrete, datacom type things to the parallel, ruggedized transceivers you can get today that are really designed around this application in terms of temperature and vibration and shock resistance, You've now got transceivers that can move 150 gigabits per second of data with a 12-channel device, and that's only operating 10 gig, 12 gig. There are units on the roadmap now that are going to go to 25 and either faster speeds just to keep pace with the amount of processing power that people are putting on these cards. You look at the AI applications, you look at some of these image processing applications for security and the sheer bandwidth and the frame rates that you need to handle that information at forces you to really take advantage of what optics can do. Okay, so just as there has been a lot of advancements in copper, what kind of advancements are you seeing in optics, but especially in the PC to PC arena? Well, PC to PC arena tends to be typically more data communication hardware, but when you look at the technology that's used there, The basic elements that are used in computer networks have been taken and ruggedized to push into the military market. The basic elements are the same. It's how you package them that ultimately allows them to survive the markets. And I think the things that we've seen there, it really comes back to data speed and density. The data rates continue to go up. The devices are capable of going 25 gigabit, 56 gigabit. Those are all available devices, and I think people will figure out ways to package them for these applications. And I think the other thing that you're going to see is an increasing density in the fiber optic cabling. You're going to see more and more of these ribbon or optical flex circuit solutions because they allow you to maximize use of space. They allow you to maximize the amount of information you can put in a given diameter cable. And when you think about the diameter of a cable and a reel and the weight of that cable when you're trying to deploy a system, that all translates into greater distance for the same amount of effort. And that really makes a difference in the field. 
Okay, so what about box to box? What kind of trends are you seeing from systems that are physically separated? I think there, what we're seeing is historically, you look at a box to box and you might have a four channel expanded beam or four channel physical contact cable assembly on it because you were running a couple of lanes of data. Now you look at a distributed radar array and you might have 24 or 48 channels of information on that same cable. And so you're seeing the termini and the connector form factors changing slightly and in general getting smaller because the boxes are also getting smaller. So you have less surface area to mount connectivity to. And I think over time, what we'll see happen is we'll start to have to move into the single mode fiber world. Most of this stuff today is multi-mode because the distances are, you know, hundreds of meters. Mm -hmm. Uh, The minute you start talking kilometers in these speeds, the fiber type is going to need to change and the transceiver architecture on the end is going to have to change to stuff that is readily available in the telecom market, but not necessarily ruggedized for these applications. So. All right, Mark, it's time for your off-the-cuff question. Now, I don't know anyone else in my audience who is listening but knows they've got to know you've got a DJ voice, and you were a DJ once upon a time. So tell me, how did you get involved with that? Well, it was WPGU in Champaign-Urbana. God forbid any alumni actually hears this. Um, And actually, the way I found out about it was the radio station at the time, believe it or not, was years ago, and it was an AC carrier current station which meant you could hear it in the dorms they literally hooked it up to the power grid so that you could hear it and it also had an fm side so i went down one day to just see if i could do it and somebody decided i had enough skill and taught me how to run all the transmitters and the boards and all the equipment because in those days you did everything you ran a transmitter and a whole bit so i did that for about two and a half years my junior and senior year but i was smart enough to only do it on the weekends so i didn't flunk out of engineering which happened to most of the people who worked during the week so we chose not to do that but uh, it was a lot of fun and then the, the really best side note about that is i met my first wife when i heard this voice on the radio and i'll just let you fill in the rest of the blanks <laughs> that is such a great story well thank you so much for joining me mark it was a pleasure speaking with you you're welcome great to be here next up and keeping with our rugged optic theme this week please welcome patrick machine owner and ceo of techway patrick and i are chatting all about the trends in rugged optical communication today and why signal integrity in these environments is more important than ever before check it out my guest today is patrick machine from techway thank you so much for joining me patrick my pleasure. So I'm Patrick from Techway. Techway is a French company and we are specialized in FPGA technology. We use FPGA from the beginning of our story to implement high speed data and data acquisition system. We are talking specifically about rugged optical communication. So Patrick, what kinds of trends are you seeing in this space? High-speed communication is really a big trend in our industry. And this has started long ago, almost uh, 15 years ago, when parallel buses has moved to serial buses, like the very well-known PCI bus we all had in our PC. And it moves to serial. And since that time, most of the popular buses and communication links have moved to serial. Now the big difference is that things are going up into speed and we have more and more network or communication network that are going up to the 10 gigabit per sec speed. And at that speed, there is no way you can do it with copper anymore. And uh, mm, optical communication becomes mandatory. And that's why we've been working on helping system integrator to implement optical high-speed communication. On top, we are facing a a challenge of delivering this solution to the embedded market because the embedded market is really the one driving the technology here. These are the people, especially the military people, but also the avionic people, that has a real need for huge data that can be delivered only on high-speed optical communication. All right, Patrick. So let's talk in particular about high-speed data flow. Now, what particular or specific challenges are we looking at here? 
the technical challenges we have to deal with are related to the speed, obviously. So one is power dissipation. As you may know, the faster you go, the more power you create into electronic system. And therefore, the, you need to deal with this power dissipation and how you extract it from your system. The other thing that is uh, complicated is uh, data integrity. The faster you go, the more crosstalk or this type of uh, perturbation you have on your system. And it's extremely complex to deal with, especially if you are planning to implement this optical communication into very small system where you don't have a lot of room to deploy them. And thirdly, there is an issue about the quantity of data you need to, to deal with. Today, sensors are delivering huge quantity of data, and you need to implement many links, many optical links on the same interface in order to offer system integrator bandwidth capability they want to have in order to interface with the sensors they have today. So in a related question, Patrick, what do you think are the biggest challenges in overall rugged embedded space? Concerning optical communication or high-speed communication, one of the challenges is to deal with huge quantity of data. That's a real issue. Sensors are, are delivering more and more data. You can think of uh, high-resolution cameras, for instance, or phase array uh, antennas for radars. These modern devices are really delivering huge quantity of data. And people are making systems, embedded systems with them. They want to capture that data. And therefore, they need to create sort of a big highway <laughs> from the sensor to their computer and the only technology that um, can achieve that is optical communication. And then once the data is into your computer, you need to compute today's application wants to compute this huge quantity of data on a very quick way or with very big uh, real-time constraint. And therefore, the data needs to be dispatched all around the computer or sometimes people are using several computers and need to dispatch their data among all these computers. And that's where optical communication will be also helpful to them in order to allow high bandwidth in between all these devices. Now, I'm sure you guys have some specific solutions that address these issues, right? Yes, we do. When it comes to high-speed communication, you really need to rely on FPGA technology. FPGA, in fact, is the only technology that people have today that drives high-speed serial links on which we will implement optical connectivity. You need also this FPGA to encode and decode the data to create protocol that will allow to transport the information on long distance. We all know the Ethernet. We all know the 10 gig Ethernet. So this is a protocol that is usually handled by the FPGA. So you need FPGAs and so you need access to the FPGA. So that's why we picked up the FMC standards. And FMC standard is a standard defined by the VIRA organization. And FMC stands for FPGA Mezzanine Card. As people may know, so the FMC standard has been designed to provide interface to FPGA computers. So it's, it's sort of a normal step to use this format to implement our optical interfaces. So in short, what we do we do FMC boards that are interfaces on which we put uh, optical devices that will allow people to have high density highways, optical highways with tens of lines getting in and tens of lines getting out of the board and um, be that way uh, able to implement the high bandwidth connectivity they need on their systems. All right, Patrick, one last question, and it's your off-the-cuff question. Okay, one last meal on planet Earth. What would it be? Fish. <laughs> I'm going to ask you a follow-up question. What kind of fish? There are a lot of different kinds of fish in the world. 
Well, I don't know. I'm like fish. I'm like sea. And uh, it makes me dreams of holidays. <laughs> so I like fish. Any type of fish will, will work out. Excellent. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Patrick. Thanks to you. And now it's time for a little news you may have missed. Design contest time. All right, let me see some hands. Yes, virtual hands will do. How many of you out there use an oscilloscope? Right? About 99% of my audience, probably. So here's the deal. Tektronics, with a little help from Farnell Newark Element 14, are giving a chance to win one of two fantastic prizes to celebrate the launch of a new next-generation oscilloscope. And the qualifications for this contest are really quite simple. Tektronics is accepting entries from anyone who is an engineer, is currently employed or self-employed, and is over the age of 18 and currently uses electronics test and measurement equipment of any brand. So sound like you? Probably, right? So what do you have to do? Uh, Not much, actually. Submit the contest entry form and that's it. And of course, uh, A, I've already entered, even though I probably can't win, and B, posted a link below the player on this week's Fish Frying page that will take you directly to the landing page for this contest so you can enter. And what will you get? Well, a free trip to Shanghai, first of all, to attend the Tektronics Technology Innovation Forum. Not only will you get flights to and from your airport of choice, transportation between the airport and the forum, but also accommodations for five nights, a trip to the Tektronics Test and Measurement Facility, and a special VIP guided tour of Shanghai. And that's just prize number one. If you get chosen for prize number two, you will get a brand new Tektronix oscilloscope worth $3,850. Pretty sweet, right? Okay, so you only have until May 30th to enter. And you can really only enter one time. Uh, I tried. (laughs) So good luck, everyone. And if any of my audience members win... Tell Tektronics, Amelia sent you. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash EE Journal. If you're into Twitter, you can monitor our tweets at EE Journal TFM. And if LinkedIn is more your thing, well, sure, you can follow us on LinkedIn as well. And we have a YouTube channel, keyword EE Journal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of super cool techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series hosted by yours truly. And you can subscribe to our EE Journal YouTube channel as well. And by clicking the links below the player on this week's Fish Frying page, you can grab our Fish Frying RSS feed or subscribe to Fish Fry via the iTunes store. And remember, if you want any further information about the stories covered in today's show, just head on over to eejournal.com and look for this week's Fish Frying page. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology, any fun EE conference coming up that I absolutely should attend, I'll see you at the Design Automation Conference in less than a month, or even the best geeky hotspot in your city. I love that stuff. Shoot me a line at amelia at eejournal.com or post a comment on our forums on EE Journal. For the week of May 10th, 2019, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried.